Okay, I thought I'd show you the driver's side. Um, there's everything assembled. New springs, new wheel cylinder, new shoes, and um, everything is in place <clears throat> and seems to work just fine. And so, like I said before, I only do one side at a time. And because this side had so many damaged parts, I use the other side as a reference. So now that this side is done, I can go to the other to the passenger side and use this side as a reference if I need to. So I'm going to move over to, move over to the passenger side. Okay, so here's the passenger side, and it's a mirror image of the driver's side. All the functions are the same; it's just the exact opposite as far as um, layout. Now, if you'll notice, the rear shoe has more material on it than the front shoe. And they do that on purpose. And I want to point out that the shoes are also made that way, the new ones. So you can see, and look, there's my little toad friend hanging out. I got a bunch of them around here. But I laid out the shoes the same way. Here's a, the rear one with the longer um, material on it, and then the shorter one up front. So what I'm going to do here is start taking things apart. And I do have some brake tools and they work but because I grew up using vice grips for everything I probably will use vice grips for most of this so let me get set up and get started okay so I know that this little tool here is designed to take off these caps and it's okay it works but um, the problem I have with it is whenever I try to take something or reinstall this part there's no way to retain that cap in there so I use my vice grips it's what I've always used and I just get a nice little cramp on the part I'll push in rotate and then I can hang on to that little clip and um, I do the reverse when I go to install it so it takes care of that one and I'll do the same on the front Push it in, rotate it, comes right off. Works for me, so that's the way I do it. Now this tool, I've not used it much, but it seems like it would make sense to be able to hook onto a spring and slide it off. So that's what I'll do. And again, I take my um, springs, any pieces I'm using, and I lay them out in the same pattern on the floor as they are on the car. And that way it's just easier for me to reference. Let me see if I can do something with this side. Nothing really to get a hold of on this one. There, that worked. So there's the right side. And then this part, this goes on to um, the parking brake assembly down here. And this has a bunch of pieces to it. Let me show you this real quick. Real quick. You got the main arm here which hooks around the post and then that hooks to this little plate which is then hooked into sorry about the shadows um, this bigger plate which is then attached to the cable that connects to the parking brake so you take the rest of that off and I'm going to grab this with my vice grips just because it's easier to get a hold of again lay things out the way they come off so at this point I can take off the front shoe get it out of the way and also that frees up oh, there it falls off there it frees up the adjuster and I can check it and make sure it's good and the adjusters it matters which way these go in there's a left and a right um, the left one you can see I'm turning it counterclockwise and it's going in I'm sorry, the right one. Um, it's going in. And so you don't want to put this on the other side. It won't work. The other side actually works inverse of this. Just so you know, there is a left and a right. This is that parking brake assembly I was talking about. And um, let's see. I'll have to find it. It rolled away from me. There's a little spring that goes right there. And then, of course, there's a, a cup. This piece, a little fatter, goes through that, and it goes through 
the uh, brake shoe as well. And that's what mount, that's where that little rod came through right here. So that's about it for taking this apart. The other thing you have to worry about is a spring on the bottom of the shoes, and that retains the adjuster. So that goes in a certain way as well. If you put it in the wrong way, if you put it in upside down, the fat part of that spring will hit the adjuster. You don't want that. It's got to go up. So let me get things cleaned up, and I'm going to change out the wheel cylinder and start putting things back together. Okay, here's just one other thing I want to point out. Um, I pulled the wheel cylinder off, and I noticed that or all around it in the back here it was wet and then when I pulled the uh, little plungers that ride on the pistons inside of there see that that's wet that tells me this wheel cylinder has been bad for a while and it was basically just leaking fluid out and not doing its job so I'm gonna salvage those I need them for the new wheel cylinder and I'll clean up the rest of the little pieces as I go um, one thing I want to point to or point at is this shoe adjuster. I don't know. What, I don't know what the real name is, but it's it goes between the two shoes, and the spring goes around this end. And, it, and in this case, it sits like this, so that the spring goes towards the front. Um, it won't even fit on this one here. So make sure you have that spring. Okay, it's kind of tricky to show you everything. Uh, without my arms being in the way but let me show you a couple things as you can see I've got the new forward shoe in place and I did salvage the little plungers or whatever you want to call them that go into the wheel cylinder and again this is the uh, rod I was talking about or that goes between the two or the plate however you, however you want to label it and it'll slide in underneath the wheel cylinder and interact with that forward shoe you can see the spring go. Hopefully you can see it. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Now this this rear shoe, as I was pointing out earlier with this, uh, well this is, I, sh I said parking brake. What I meant was adjuster. This is the adjuster for um, the shoes. This hole right here, and you can see the length of this uh, fitting, it goes inside of that. And that's going to go onto that rod, pin, and get locked on with the new spring and retainer clip. Along with that, since I have the spring kit, I'm going to replace this spring, which goes on the left. In this case, it's white. It's going to hook in there, like that. And then, it's going to attach to this piece. And this, is, this hooks on to right there, and then this goes up over the post at the top. Um, so I'm just going to start putting things together and then show you some more as I go along. Okay, bear with me on my lighting a little bit. I'm trying to get as much light in there as I can. Um, as I talked about the uh, parking brake um, assembly, it actually goes through this little hole right here on the back of the uh, rear brake shoe. has to fit in there. And then there's the, raw, the plate or uh, shoe separator however you want to label it, and the spring, and then the white spring went to the back, hooked on to that loop, and then the blue spring went to the front. So all of this is attached now. The only thing left to do is install the lower spring that will go down here, and I'll show you that in a second, and then put the uh, adjuster in place. Okay, I want to try to show you this and see if it makes sense. These are the old shoes, and this is the adjuster. And basically, if you look here, this plate is what does the adjustments. And it goes up and down. Mostly when you back up and tap your brakes, that's how this adjusts. Um, if this were to rotate clockwise, hopefully you can see it extends. And that takes up the gap and tightens it up against your brake drum. Um, this part, obviously, these two can't rotate, and this thing rotates within this cup here. So, along with that, with this in place, 
when I was talking about this spring, if you put it in upside down, that spring will hit those teeth and have make it uh, not want to adjust. I'm sorry, if you put it in like this, I'm sorry, upside down. So you want to turn it so that it's kind of facing away and up and over that uh, adjuster teeth. Hope that makes sense. Okay, I've got the spring in place and I've adjusted the tensioner or the adjuster all the way in. And so now what I'm going to do is set it in place on this back side. Take a screwdriver, push the front shoe away, and there it is. So that should take care of that. There you can see the little spring on the adjuster is in place. Everything's attached to where it should be. And it basically mirrors what's on the other side. And uh, now all I have left to do is basically set the drum on and check my uh, how tight it is. And I will turn the adjuster as necessary to get a snug fit on these brake shoes. I don't want it super tight that I can't get the, shoe, the drum off but I want it just to where it rubs a little bit and I can hear it. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I will uh, bleed the brakes. Now I can't do it by myself. I'm gonna have to get my neighbor to come over and give me a hand. But basically, um, I will start on this wheel because I wanna be at the furthest point away from the master cylinder. And in that process, he will pump the brake pedal, build pressure. And when I, I'll tell him to hold it, which means push down on the pedal keep pressure on the pedal and then I will open the bleeder on the back side of the wheel cylinder it has a little rubber boot on it and whenever um, he pushes down air and fluid will come out of the bleeder and then I will close it and then he can release the pedal and start pumping again now in this process I have to double check to make sure there's fluid in the master cylinder and we have to cycle ourselves in that sequence so that we get all the air out, out of the line and we're just getting straight fluid. Once this side is done, then I will go to the driver's side and repeat the process. Same way at the front, I will work from the right side, the right front uh, assembly of the caliper and bleed it all out and then do the driver's side. And again, checking fluids to make sure I'm always having fluid in the master cylinder. I think that's about it. and. Uh, Hopefully I can get this thing back on the ground soon. And again, thanks for watching.